Version control is very important when it comes to software development process as it helps us to organize our code, it helps us to make sure our code is stored properly and it also version controls our code. And also it helps us in the whole automation process of software development process. That's why a lot of companies prefer to use all different types of version control system like you know Mercurial, Git or AWS code commit, whatever they prefer. So in this video, we'll be detailing what version control is and we'll be talking about one of the most popular version control systems out there, that is Git. How, what it is and how does it help us. And also guys, I want to tell you about Great Learning's really amazing initiative called Great Learning Academy, where we have more than 80 plus free courses from various different domains that you guys can enroll for and earn a free certificate from. You can do this from our website or you can go ahead and download our Great Learning app on your mobile and enroll from there. So let's get started. What is version control? So when you think of the word version control, what comes to your mind? Well, as the name suggests, it's version control. You control the different versions of a thing. Now, when talking about this with software development, right? It is important because you have to version control your software. Now, in software development, you write source code. This source code is then used to create a software. Now, you will definitely have multiple versions of a software. To have those multiple versions of software, you'll have to have multiple versions of the source code. And that is where version controls comes in. Now, these days when software is developed, it is not developed with the mindset that there will only be one piece of code that will be deployed. And that's it you will definitely be writing multiple lines of code and multiple versions of that code because you will definitely try to improve upon your previous code and to improve upon it, you will write new versions. Now these days, smaller snippets of code are deployed in regular successions with regular feedbacks. So what this means is that you write small pieces of code, you push them and you get a feedback whether it's from your team or whether it's from the end user and you improve upon that code by writing newer versions and they are again smaller snippets. So this way you're writing many, many different versions of a code, you know, improving every time, improving every time you write a new piece of code. This leads to many, many different versions of the code. And that creates a need to organize the code and all of its different versions of it. This is where version control comes in. You have to control the different versions. So version control is basically a practice of managing and storing different versions of code. Now, if now if I were to give you guys an example, um, think about a college student or a school student who has to do his final year project. And he has finished his final project. So he's doing his project in, you know, analyzing how a particular website processes a certain thing. Now he's completed his work and he has made sure he's documented everything and, you know, he's written down everything that is related to the code. Now he's on the deadline because, you know, that's the last day and he's finished his work. But he feels like he can, do you know, do better things. He can make, he can improve upon his existing project because he feels like, you know, he needs a better grade and to get a better grade he needs to show his professor that he's done his best and he's done his best in every other part so he sees that there is a need he tries to identify if there are any problems with the already existing project and he sees that yes there is he sees that he can optimize the processing part of his project even more now to do this what he does is that he writes the code the new code for optimizing the whole project over his old code when he does this, he takes a lot of time. Maybe he takes like four or five hours or maybe six hours and he sits down in one place and does all of the changes. Like he makes all of the changes. And once he's done making all of the changes, he tries to execute the code. But this is where a problem occurs. The code doesn't run properly. Why? Now he doesn't know why the code doesn't run properly. So what should he do? Should he panic? Because like the, that day is that the next day is a deadline. He has to go and show to his professor what he's done. And he can't show anything because, you know, he has a project that is not running. The mistake over here that he made was overwriting his previous code. If instead what he had done was, you know, write the new code in a separate file. 
and back up his older version of the project in another file, in another location. This way, both of them don't interact with each other and there are no conflicts or there is no overwriting. There is no miscommunication. If you suppose don't do well in your new version of the code, you can always go back to the old version. And that in his case, he couldn't do that because he had overwritten his older code. So you can see what would happen if he had introduced version control system and how important version control system is. So this is one of the examples where you understand the need for version control because you can always make mistakes and if you make mistakes and you don't have time to rectify those mistakes then you're going to be in trouble. But if you, you know, manage your versions of different code, you can always go back to the different versions, the older version, the working versions. So this is especially the case with larger companies that have multiple projects and multiple teams working on them. So, for example, there's a team that has a website uh, for, you know, it's a shopping website and they have multiple projects on it. They have project A, they have project B and they have project C. And there are different teams working on them. There's team A working on project A. Team B working on project B and team C working on project C and project A is for their payment feature. Project B is for their shopping feature and project C is for their cart feature or their warehousing feature, the back end the, where all the you know items come in and get stored, the warehousing feature. So all you can see that all these different teams work on different versions and different uh, features of the website. So let's examine project A. So project A is basically your payment feature, right? So there are three versions to it. There's A1, A2, and A3. Now the A3 is the latest version of the code. Right now it's not being deployed. The team is still working on A3. A2 is the one that has been deployed. Now A2 has been deployed for a good amount of time. The users have used it for around six months and there have been no crashes. It's working perfectly fine, but you know, you always have to make improvements on what you've done before. So the team identified the places where they couldn't make those changes and they came up with the idea of A3, the latest version, and they're working on it and they've actually done working on it. And now they're planning to deploy it. So what they do is they pull back A2 and they immediately push A3 as the latest version. But then they see that A3 starts crashing. They start crashing when the client enters a specific number or a specific something. They, they haven't exactly identified the problem, but it crashes the whole website and that affects the other teams also. So this is important. This is, you know, a great mistake. So to in this situation, what they can do is they can make sure that the application or the website that is provided to the end user remains there. Like, uh, this shouldn't happen that there is no application for the users to use. So to do that, what they can do is they can pull back A3 and push back A2 again because A2 was the latest stable version that these people were using and it was working fine for six months. There were no issues with it. So this way, they make sure that their clients or customers have an end working product. While this is happening, while A2 has been pushed, they go ahead and debug A3. So they, 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 they can go ahead and see what is a mistake made in A3. They can rectify it. And while they're doing it, there's no downtime for their final application. And this way, B1, uh, I mean, Project B and Project C can still, you know, go on working without any integration issues. So this is again why, you know, version control is important. It helps you organize all of your code it allows for greater collaboration between different teams you can manage different projects at the same time so this is exactly why people go ahead for version control so what is git git is basically a version control system we discussed that and we know git is the vcs so git is an open source vcs it's an open source version control system that allows the user to keep track of all the changes that have been made to the source code of the software so you have developer one, developer two. They are, you know, independently, uh, they, you know, they're independently, you know, are responsible for creating feature one and feature two. So once they write their feature ones and feature two, they go ahead and push it using the tool Git onto the GitHub. So the distinction between Git and GitHub here is that Git is the tool that helps you track all the changes, makes, you know, helps you do pushing and pulling. And GitHub is the dedicated storage repository, which versions all of the code that is being stored. So this is how, you know, this is what Git is. Git is an open source, you know, version control system. It gets full form as global information tracker. And, you know, uh, 
it was developed by a group of Linux kernel developers back in 2005 when they weren't satisfied with any of the free source code managers that were already available. Since they weren't very satisfied with what was available, they just came up with their own thing. You know, that's how innovation happens. When there is a need, someone will create. They, I mean, they were paid softwares also, paid source code management systems also, but people, you know, generally wanted to use free ones because of their own use, maybe personal use, or maybe, you know, the requirements weren't fulfilling enough. Now, Git and GitHub slowly became the industry standard. As people gravitate away from legacy version control systems, tools, open source tools like Git, as they provided the same features, but it was completely free. So it was completely free that uh, this became a very attractive offer to many different people, especially like startups and amateur developers, because not everyone has the resources to pay millions of dollars for a software, right? And when you don't have that accessibility to resources, you tend to go for cheaper options. And being free is an amazing offer over here. So Git has that, uh, you know, feature of it. Now, there are a lot of other features of Git. Let's discuss them. So those features are like, you know, system compatibility. Now, Git has absolutely no problem running on any type of operating system, be it Windows, be it Linux, or be it Mac. Git is also great when it comes to inter-version control system compatibility as it can work together, it can work with other tools repositories. For example, if you wanted to use Git with some other, uh, you know, repository, not GitHub, if you wanted to use it with Bitbucket, you know, if you wanted to use Bitbucket and Git together, you could do that, really. And you could, if you wanted to use Git and SVN together, Git has no problem pulling and pushing code to and from distributed repositories of SVN. Other, or any other uh, repository than GitHub. So it's got great system compatibility, not just with uh, operating systems, but also with other uh, repositories. Then comes collaboration. Now Git allows for heavy collaboration. A team of developers or different teams of developers can maintain a hierarchy and work on the same main code, but on different snippets of features simultaneously and then merge all of their work when they're done to form the software that is to be deployed and be presented as the end product. Now this allows for easy tracking of who's working on what part of the project and what changes they have made, which again, you know, uh, relates back to whatever details they have, uh, whatever details have been or of changes have been made are stored as logs. Then comes speed. So speed is another feature of Git. Now Git, Git is very efficient at handling code and allows the user for easy forking and cloning of major repositories onto local system. So if you're working in a company which uh, and you're working in a specific developer team and uh, you want to pull the whole uh, you know code into your system so that you can start working on a new feature, then you can do so very easily and very efficiently. It is also much faster than all of his alternatives. So if it you know all the other alternatives like Mercurial and AWS Code Commit, it is much much faster than them. So that is again a big thing about Git. And then another feature is distributed system and reliability. Now, this facet of Git allows the multiple users to work on the same piece of code from anywhere in the world as it is stored in a distributed repository accessible from the Internet. This allows for companies to hire people without having to worry about their location, but rather their abilities. Not only that, people can start working from, you know, their homes. Work from home becomes very easy, especially in situations where you have a large pandemic at hand, where people can't travel to the office due to security uh, and safety reasons. Then you can, you know, just rely on whatever is available on the cloud or the distributed repository. Just pull your code, work on it, and then push it back. You know, so it removes any, uh, you know, dependency on the location itself. You, you don't have any dependency on wh what your location is. That is a great improvement from before. This provides a sense of availability as the code is always available to the developers. They needn't worry about the server maintenance or the upkeep of that server also. Unless you had your own dedicated server where you were storing all of your source code, you would, you know, access the cloud. And that is not maintained by your company. Or if it is, you know, that is fine. But that's still not your job. The If you are making use of any services that are provided by AWS or Azure or GCP, then they are maintaining those servers. So there is no upkeep for those servers. You just have to pay them and they will guarantee the availability to you.
And then the last feature I'll talk about is security. Now, we've already discussed this when we talk about version control systems, how they will create a layer of security. With Git also, you have the same. It keeps a track of all the changes and all the commits that were made as logs. This allows for easy investigation if or whenever any issue occurs down the pipeline. So if any issue suppose occurs down the pipeline and you want to figure out why that issue occurred, then you would just go ahead and check out your, all the commits that have been made to your master branch. And if you see that there are some issues, you can easily click on them and, you know, make changes accordingly. Now, Git is overall one of the best source code management tools that anyone can use. You can be a software developer, you can be a data scientist, you can be a student or a professor or even an academic researcher or even hobbyist. Everyone can make use of it because it's so easy to learn and it's so easy to use that anyone can make use of it. Even if you're not using it for software development, you can even use it for just storing your files. It's just amazing. So that was our video on what is Git. I hope it really helped you get a better understanding of what Git is and what are some of the features of Git. And again, guys, if you're interested, please go ahead and visit gitlearning.in slash academy where you'll find more than 80 plus free courses that you can enroll for and earn a free certificate. And if you want, you can do that on your mobile also. So guys, thank you so much for watching.